Hello everyone, uh, I'm Roshi. This video will talk about hypergraph unreliability in quasi polynomial time. And this is joint work with Jason and Dan Malia. So we study uh, hypergraph unreliability, which is an extension of network unreliability to hypergraphs. Okay? So in real world networks, we can observe they are not perfectly reliable. For example, in communication networks, the cable might break. And in transportation networks, the railways might get bombed during a war. When that happens, we still want the network to stay connected so that every user can be served. Therefore, a key question to ask is, does the network disconnect on the random link failures? Okay, here we can assume the link failures are random, uh, also for, for simplicity, but also um, it's also reasonable when we have little information about the failure. So this is actually a key question in the field of network reliability, and many books have been devoted to it. Now, usually a network can be modeled by a graph, right? Um, so why do we care about hypergraphs? Um, because there is a writing concept called higher order networks, which means uh, so some complex networks, maybe it's important to also model some structure beyond pairwise interaction, where maybe uh, some interaction about involving three parties in the network, like this. So it's necessary to represent such a higher order network as hypergraph. Um, to illustrate uh, this idea in more detail, let, let me introduce some uh, research in neural science. So uh, that, that work just uh, considers like partitions human brain into regions and tested their uh, fMRI signals for each region. So these signals are re represented as curves in the first part of the figure. Um, we can observe that, well, in the first time interval, there are uh, similarity between the first and fourth uh, signals and the second and third curves. So this will in imply a, a pairwise correlation uh, between these two pairs of curves. And then in the last time interval, uh, they observe uh, common synchronization among all four intervals, uh, all four curves. So this will imply a four party uh, higher order interaction. And in general, they just check every pairs and every tuples of curves, uh, how similar they are. If it's very similar, then they result, uh, they conclude that there might be a uh, higher order connection among these tuples. So they will model this as a uh, hypergraph with higher weight. And if it's not so similar, then they will model this as a low weight hyperedge or even no hyperedge. In this way, uh, the paper models the brain into a higher order network or into a hypergraph. And then they use this model to study some structure of brains. Maybe some part of the brain are collaboratively solving some tasks, right? Because they have us, uh, this will be indicated as a strong uh, connected like uh, component of the hypergraph. Okay, so this is just some example, but I hope this will uh, convince you that it's natural and reasonable to study the network on reliability in hypergraphs as well. So formally we can define the problem as um, like uh, given a hypergraph G and uh, some probability P, uh, we want to set, we want to estimate the probability that G disconnects if each hyperedge fails independently with probability P. Okay, here fails just means to to be removed, um, and and connection record that connection in hypergraph is well if U and V are uh, connected by a path, right? And they are connected. A path is just a, a sequence of vertices where each adjacent pair are in the same hyperedge. Okay, so the problem is just compute this uh, value of unreliability we denote it to be UGP. Okay, so what do we know about this problem? Uh, well, it is classically known as a hard sharpie hard problem, even on graphs. Uh, recall that Sharpie is a complexity class of uh, counting the number of feasible solutions. So this means it's 
uh, unlikely to get a binomial time algorithm for exact value of UGP. So the goal is actually to get some good approximation of UGP. And in graphs, this problem is actually uh, well studied. So several fully polynomial time randomized approximation schemes are known for graphs, which means they will output a one plus epsilon approximation in polynomial time, uh, polynomial dependency on n and one plus epsilon, and also it will succeed in high probability. Okay, so there are a very long line of such results. So this is good, but surprisingly for hypergraphs, nothing non-trivial was known before. Uh, so this seemed to be a, yeah, some very interesting new problem. And um, we do remark that so some of the previously listed uh, algorithms on graphs can be directly extended to hypergraphs as well, but at a cost of two to the R additional runtime term. So here, uh, R is a rank or maximum hyper edge size of the hypergraph. So this means we only have polynomial time algorithm uh, like PTAS when the rank is at most log n. And for rank beyond that, we don't have anything, any non trivial uh, polynomial time algorithm. Okay. So in our work, uh, this work, we obtain quasi polynomial time algorithm uh, for one plus epsilon approximation of UGP. So we actually give two algorithms for that. The first one will run in M to log n time, uh, and the dependency on epsilon will be polynomial, and uh, uh, it will output one plus epsilon approximate value of UGP, which means there's a multiplicative error of one plus epsilon. And the second algorithm is uh, faster. It runs in M times N to log n log length one over delta time, but at the cost of uh, extra additive error of delta, this, like this. And these two runtime might seem not so different uh, because in graphs, M and N are the same rank order, but in higher graphs, uh, M can be exponentially larger than N. So the second running time will be favorable. And this delta is some parameter we can choose in the algorithm. Typically, we can, we can imagine delta to be some exponentially small additive error. In this case, uh, option two will run in something like n to log square n times m. So this running time is uh, um, faster and at the cost of exponentially small additive error. And our first algorithm is actually quite simple. So this talk, I will introduce it in detail. And for algorithm two, I will only like introduce the high level idea. Okay, let's get into the algorithms. So as a sentence check, we are estimating some probability. Um, so the first thing we can do is to do Monte Carlo sampling. That is, we directly draw a sample by uh, deleting HH independently with probability P right, as describing the problem. And then the estimator is just the indicator of whether the resulting hypergraph is disconnected or not. Then uh, this estimator will have will be unbiased, which means the expectation is just UGP. And we are hitting a event of probability U, which means we roughly need one over U samples to, to hit. And actually by taking slightly more than that, we can get a constant uh, good approximation. Okay. So this is already a good algorithm when a U is larger than some one over quasi polynomial because this running time is already some quasi polynomial. And the remaining cases when u is very small, less than one over quality positive polynomial. In this case, the monochrome sampling is inefficient, and we have some we, we need something more. This might seem to be a border case, but it's also a usual scenario in real networks because they are typically designed to be very reliable, but we still want to evaluate how reliable they are. So let's uh describe Montcarlo in some notation. Uh, we can sample some indicator for each hyper edge and delete this integer, delete the average if the integer is one. And it's because we want to delete with probability p, this integer is a randomly random variable with uh, parameter p. Now we want to, uh, we can do something more. We can write the indicator as product of two independent indicators, where i1 is probability of q and i2 is probability of p over q. 
then uh, we on the running sample will delete a hyperarch if both i1 of e and i2 of e are one and their product are one with probability p okay so this is the same view uh, same distribution just we are introducing more notations now let's consider only reveal information of i1 indicators and uh, hide the information of i2 indicators okay so what will happen uh, consider any average e if i1 of e is zero then no matter what i2 is e will not be deleted so e will always stay connected in the resulting hypergraph and we can safely contract it without affecting the connectivity if i1 of e is one then uh, it depends on what's what, what i2 of e is okay so because everything is independent in this distribution uh, we conclude that in the resulting hypergraph every such hyperedge will be deleted with property p over q, which is a property of i2 is equal to one. So this view is equivalent to, we first contract all the uh, hyperedges with i1 of e is equal to zero to form some resulting hypergraph. And then in the resulting hypergraph, we delete each edge with property p over q, which is uh, the same subproblem in the same form of uh of p over q. And also because I1 are also independent uh, indicators. So this is actually, we are forming uh, this H by contracting each hyper H with first with probability one minus Q, which is I1. And then the resulting hyper of H is, uh, we, we want to estimate UH of P over Q. And then as because of what we discussed before, uh, UH of P over Q with, will be an unbiased estimator of UGP. Okay, and as you may notice, this is the same subproblem of the same form, so we can apply it. Uh, we can solve apply the same algorithm to solve it recursively, and this is actually already a good algorithm in graphs. Okay, so what we can uh, what is known before in graphs is that we can choose some suitable Q such that first uh, such a random contraction step will reduce the size by half, and then the variance introduced such a, in such a uh, step is small in the sense that it can be suppressed by averaging constantly many independent recursive costs. Okay. So intuitively, we have a recursion, recursion tree of constant branch and log n depths. Therefore, this recursion tree will be some polynomial size, and uh, the algorithm will run in some polynomial time. So this is already good in graphs. But unfortunately, in high graphs, this will no longer hold. Okay, so let, to see what will fail, let, let look at some extreme uh, setting of bad example. So here, consider we have like only one type of hyper edge, which is a spanning hyper edge that contains all the vertices. And say there are lambda of them, so u is uh, p to lambda because we want, we need to fail all the uh, hyper edges. And in random contraction, we are contracting each edge with property q, uh, one minus q. So with property q to lambda, we don't contract anything. And uh, the remaining event is that well, we contract some hyper edge. So with property one minus q to lambda, we get a single. Term. And the second event is much more likely to happen. So our recursion tree will be like this. Okay. So if we check the unreliability, we get zero trivially for the singleton, and we get P over Q raised to lambda for the first subproblem. Uh, so the expression is, is correct, where we have P over Q to, to lambda times Q to lambda, which is P to lambda. But the recursion is not doing anything, right? Because the first subproblem, we have the same hypergraph as well. And we have to keep running on the same hypergraph. And the remaining are all trivially returning zero. So even if we run it forever, we can get cannot get any non-trivial estimator except zero. So uh, what, we fa what fails here is that, well, we can observe the 
size decrease is still good in expectation, right? We we decrease to very small on average, but just it it's not so concentrated as in graphs. Uh, and we have a very large outlier, which will break the guarantee of uh, recursion depth. Okay. And such a bad case will occur when rank is very large intuitively because we have a large hyper edge. Uh, although we expect to remove half of it, it's all or nothing. We ha have to either remove it or keep it. So this will cause some uh, large variance in size decrease. And how do we resolve it? Well, we like our key observation here is that this is more or less the only reason of of, of bad case of random contraction. So okay, so if we assume that there's no such large hyper edge, if we assume the rank is at most half of n, then the random contraction will still work in the sense that well we can choose suitable q such that we still have constant fraction of size decrease. And the number of branches needed to suppress variance is now some poly n. Okay, so this is weaker than what happened, what is what I just described for graphs, but still we can get some quasi polynomial recursion because now we have a recursion with poly n branches and log n depths. So this will naturally give you a quasi polynomial size recursion, and the drawing time will be uh, m to log n. Uh, sorry, will be some yeah, will be some and to polylog. But um, we still need to get rid of the large hyperages, right, in general. So what do we do that? Well, how do we get rid of large hyperages? In algorithm one, we actually simply do that by enumeration. So assume we have some L large hyperages and just we just list them in some order. And then let's review them one by one in this order. So if we know that the, if we review the first hyperage that don't fail in the list is the i's one, then uh, we can just, by revealing this information, we can just delete the first i minus one edges that fail and the contract the i's edge that doesn't fail. Then in the resulting hypergraph, the remaining average are, are not touched, so they will still independently fail with property P. Therefore, we can recursively solve UH of P. And this is good because we contract some larger edge, so we get size decrease by half. Okay. Then the remaining uh, case is when all large average fail. In this case, we can delete all these large average. And then the resulting hypergraph will also be good because we have now have bounded rank and we can call this random contraction with polynomial poly and many branches. Okay. So in this way, we have a recursion that branch into M plus poly n subproblems where M is for the enumeration for the first type and poly n is for the random contraction in the second case. And then uh, we still have log n depths so the total running time will be m to log n because we have m dependency here. Okay. So this concludes our uh, first algorithm. And now in the second algorithm, our goal is to improve running time from m to log n to n to polylog. Recall that because m can be exponentially larger than n, so uh, this second running time will be quite really better. And we still want to follow the same framework which means we want a recursion with still with log n depths. And so we can afford uh, n to poly n branches, okay? but we cannot afford m branches, which happens in the enumeration. And this means our random contraction will still work if we have bounded rank, but we still we need something more for large edges. And, and recall that the number of large edges, uh, so the bad case seems to be when most of edges are large. And to see this idea, uh, let's consider a dream, an extreme case that all the hyperages are large. Okay, so this is still some bad case now. But this case, if you look uh, hard enough, you can observe that there cannot be two disjoint hyperages, right? Because 
these two, if they are disjoint, then their total like size size of their union will be will exceed n, which is impossible. Okay. So this means when the hypergraph is separated, is cut, uh, all hyperregis in some degree cut must fail. Okay, if you consider this is cut, and the, if there are some hyperregis in the left, then there it cannot be hyperregis in the right. So if you consider degree cut of registering on the right, uh, its degree cut is fully removed, right? And and also when some degree fail, of course the the hyperregis graph also disconnects. The reverse is true. So this means the event of hypergraph disconnection is equivalent to even the, the like the union of events of uh, some degree cut fail. Because the unreliability is just the property of this event. So we can write UGP to be the probability of union of degree cuts fail. Uh, and which in in terms of logic we can formula we can write this to be R of uh, degree cuts and N of uh, hyper edges in the cut to fail. And this is a, a disjunctive non form formula in polynomial size because there are only m n such uh, degree cuts. Okay, and therefore the problem is now reduced to the DNF probability problem, uh, which is just estimate the probability of this DNF to be true. And for that problem, we know some uh, good approximation. As this is also shall be hard, but we also want an approximation. And this can be solved in point number time. Okay. So in this way, we can solve actually solve this extreme case of all the hyper edges are large. And in general, we want to combine uh, these two parts of the algorithm. That is, we first partition the hyper edges into large and small. And for the large part, we use this DNF, uh, DNF probability idea. And for small part, we still run the random contraction idea. Okay. So we will be good if we, we like contrast some larger edge or get a size decrease in the small part. Uh, so this is a like main idea of the second algorithm, but it will not directly work because the large part and the small part will not synchronize. Like, uh, will not synchronize. So we need something more uh, to resolve this issue, and I will skip here. Okay. So in conclusion. Uh, we consider this hypergraph unreliability problem, uh, and we give two uh, quasi polynomial time algorithms. So, um, yeah, a natural open question here is uh, can we obtain a polynomial time processing screen, right? Uh, polynomial time one plus epsilon approximation for hypergraph unreliability. Yeah, thank you for your attention.